and we are focusing so much on other people's personalities, traits, gifts, talents, and attributes, so much so that we don't see our own, then we won't have the clarity and purity of heart we need to appreciate the gift giver, God, to develop and to grow our own gifts. Hey everyone, I'm DQ Clark, and this is your weekly Bible study parable on why you shouldn't compare yourselves to others. Each week I present a parable to you guys on a biblical topic or life principle. We talk about the meaning, the interpretation, and how it can apply to your life. Let's get started. So the parable, a wonderful and loving father gave his two daughters two very special, very precious, unique gifts one day. Both daughters got very beautiful, very ornate, one of a kind music boxes. There were not two like it anywhere in the world. They were very rare, very special, and specifically handcrafted for that particular daughter. The two daughters were excited to receive their gifts. They each ran to their rooms to open their gifts. They were to bring their music boxes to dinner that night to show the other family members and guests. When they found out they were music boxes, they absolutely adored them. They studied and loved every single unique detail about their boxes. One daughter's box was small and delicate, a lot like her. It was hand painted in beautiful pinks, yellows, golds, and creams. It had the smallest details and tiniest curved carvings. It was light in her hand and absolutely breathtaking to behold. She loved and appreciated it very much. When she opened the music box's top, it rang out the most melodiously sweet soprano notes as if a songbird lived right in that very box. It was almost as if the sweet high tone music matched the delicate and soft box it was made in. The daughter loved her delicate little box and was so grateful to her father. The other daughter was likewise excited to open her wrap gift. She sat on her bed and she pulled off the wrapping. What she found was absolutely beautiful as well. She lifted a very beautiful, sturdy, and strong music box out of the wrapping, a lot like her. It felt like it was made of solid oak and had some weight to it. It was hand painted in deep, beautiful blues, silvers, purples, and blacks. It had the most robust details and beautiful, wide, round curves and carvings. It was heavy in her hand like no one would be able to miss it and it was absolutely breathtaking to behold. She loved it and appreciated it and her father so much. When she opened the music box's top, it belted out the most melodiously deep, soothing alto and tenor sounds. It was almost as if a screeched owl or a barred owl lived right in that very box. The sound would resonate and soothe. It was like the deep, beautiful sounds matched the box that it was made in. The daughter was very grateful to her father and loved her gift. Later that evening, both daughters brought their music boxes to dinner to show the other family members and guests. They were so excited to share their music boxes. They were both so proud. When they got to dinner, the daughters wanted to show each other their music boxes first. They were excited. The daughter with the lighter colored box showed her sister all of the beautiful and ornate details, the small curves and lines, and then she opened the top of the box and let the beautiful high-pitched soprano notes sing out for her sister to hear. The daughter with the deeper color box was upset, but she tried not to let it show. Her sister's box was light and delicate and sweet and dainty. Compared to that box, her own box seemed like a mammoth of a dark blob that brought everything down, not lifted it up. Her box didn't seem strong and sturdy and deep and soothing anymore. It seemed big and bulky and in the way and noisy. She was now embarrassed to show her box compared to her sister's sweet little dainty box. When the sister with the lighter color box asked to see the other sister's box, the other sister declined. Better to save it for later. Better to preserve the music. The father and the other guests all came in for dinner. The father asked his daughters to show their respective music boxes to the family members and guests. The first daughter did delightfully and everyone oohed and awed over her small, delicate, light, and sweet box. The music that rang from her box was encouraging and inspiring, and unbeknownst to her, but known by the father, the music was also healing. There were some in the room who suffered from depression, but when she played her music box, the music actually brought encouragement and cured them. The father explained this to everyone after her song played. When he asked the other daughter to show and to play her music box, she was still so embarrassed and uncomfortable to show it. She didn't want to. She was sure that the others would like her sister's music box better than hers. But her father insisted, so she brought it out, and to her surprise, 
everyone oohed and awed over her box too. They loved her box, but she couldn't see why compared to her sisters, so she didn't believe them. And when she went to open the box to play that now annoying music, nothing happened. Figures, it's ugly and broken, she said out loud. But her father corrected her. It's neither ugly nor broken, he said. It's more beautiful than you believe, and the music only works if you see the beauty in the box. If you don't appreciate the beauty of the box, it won't play for you. The girls went to bed that night, and the daughter with the deeper color box thought about what her father said to her. She looked at her box again. You know, it was quite beautiful. It was peaceful to look at, welcoming, and secure. She was sorry she disliked her box and compared it to her sister's. In fact, she loved it. She went to bed holding it that night as she slept. The next night at dinner, the fathers asked his daughters to play their music boxes again. The first did and the same thing happened. People were encouraged and inspired by the sweet, high toned soprano notes. When the second daughter came forward, she presented her box as well. As she went to lift the top, she expected it not to work again, but she was wrong. This time it belted out the most deeply soothing and satisfying tenor and alto notes. Everyone, including her sister, loved the box and loved the music. And to her surprise, those in the room who had been dealing with anxiety and worry were soothed, comforted, and cured. The father smiled at both his daughters, pleased. So, the interpretation. So in this parable, we have two daughters, two sisters, and they represent each and every one of us in this world. Their father represents our heavenly father, God, and the dinner guests and other family members represent those in our circle of influence, those that are around us. And the daughters' respective music boxes represent the essence of who we are. They represent us. God has given each and every one of us an essence, so to speak. This is who we are and what we are comprised of. This includes what we look like, how tall or how short, how curvy or how straight we are. This includes our personalities, our gifts, our talents, our looks, our laughter, our voice, just everything about who we are individually, our, our trait, our essence. You'll notice in the parable that each daughter is given a gift, given a music box that reflects her. One is light, dainty, sweet, and pretty. The other is strong, sturdy, deep, and beautiful. Meaning one daughter is given one set of attributes and gifts and another is given another set. They are different and they are unique to them. And each daughter initially loves and appreciates her music box. She values it and likes it for the way it is. But when the music boxes are side by side, the second daughter starts to compare her music box with her sister's music box and doesn't like and appreciate her music box anymore. At first, when she first gets her music box, she loves and appreciates the individuality of it. But when she puts it next to her sister's, it doesn't seem so individual and unique anymore. It actually seems everything that her sister's box is not. And this unfortunately can be the same with us. Many of us would probably like ourselves a whole lot better if there were no other people to compare ourselves with. <laughs> if it were just us, we wouldn't compare our looks, our weight, our personalities, our traits. The differences wouldn't exist, so there would be nothing to compare to. But when we do start to compare ourselves with others, we begin to notice in ourselves what we perceive as flaws because it's different from what someone else has or doesn't have. Well, they have thick curly hair and I have naturally fine straight hair, so theirs is better than mine. Or they work in a white collar job and have a nice big house, while well, I have a smaller nice house and work with my hands, so they must be better than me. But notice something in the parable. The music box will only give itself, will only give its music if it is appreciated by the owner. It will only play its music if it's appreciated by the owner of the box. It will remain quiet if it's not appreciated, valued, and loved. And it's the same with us. If we are focusing so much on other people's personalities, traits, gifts, talents, and attributes, so much so that we don't see our own, then we won't have the clarity and purity of heart we need to appreciate the gift giver, God, to develop and to grow our own gifts. Scripture says that those who do not have, even what little they have will be taken away from them. It's sort of like, why would God help you to grow and develop your attributes, talents, gifts, and resources if you don't appreciate what he's already given you? But know this, each gift and attribute a person is given is needed for their particular circle of influence and friends and family. 
God doesn't make mistakes. And just like the light, dainty, sweet music box cured those who were dealing with depression and the deep, soothing, beautiful music box cured those who were dealing with anxiety and worry, he's given each of us the gifts that we need to help those in our circle of influence, to help those around us. And our gifts won't help others if we don't value and appreciate them because we are focusing on other people's gifts, talents, and resources, and not on developing and growing our own. So there are three points I wanna leave with you on why you shouldn't compare yourselves to others. Number one, it's all beautiful in God's eyes. God loves diversity. Unfortunately, we live in a world that sets one thing as the standard, and anything that is not like that one thing is seen as less than best or second best. Scripture says that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't see this as better than that or that as better than this. God made us all. It is God who shaped us and made us. It is God who formed us in our mother's womb. He gave us our hair, our height, our weight, our disposition, our personality, our traits. He gave it to us all. He thinks we're beautiful and he likes what he put in us. And it's fine to take care of, to grow, to develop, to improve what he's given us. In fact, I believe he wants us to do that, to take good care of ourselves and to appreciate ourselves, but also appreciate the base, appreciate the foundation, because he sees it as his handiwork. He sees us as his handiwork. Two, each gift we have is for a specific purpose. Every gift and talent we have is for a specific purpose. It's not a mistake. Even things that we don't think are attributes like our voice or our laughter or our fighter nature or our desire to always want to question and dig deeper are probably gifts and talents that we have been given by God for his glory and for his purpose. We have been given specific gifts for the purpose that God has called us to in life, but we haven't been given gifts that we don't need. And some of those gifts that we don't have because we don't need them, they have been given to other people. But if we are focused on what others have and what we don't, we can actually miss our plan and our purpose for what God has called us to do. And this can essentially leave a void in the body of Christ. A part goes missing because we don't play our part. Scripture says that the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Each part is indispensable, especially the parts that appear weaker. And three, if you compare yourselves to others, you will miss your part in God's kingdom. When the second daughter's box didn't play, she missed out on healing all the people who had anxiety and worry. Her sister's box, or rather her gift, was used to heal those with depression, but not anxiety and worry. That was meant for the second daughter and for her box in particular. And if you are so busy comparing yourselves with what others have and you don't, people you are supposed to help will miss out. They are supposed to get it from you because of what God has given to you. Comparison can lead you to miss your purpose and destiny, to miss out on those that you are supposed to help. So why shouldn't you compare yourselves to others? Because you, my dear, are fearfully and wonderfully made. Because you were knit together by Almighty God in your mother's womb because you are special and precious to God, the God of the universe. He loves you. Believe that, appreciate that, love that and love who God made you to be and walk with God to carry out his specific plans for you and his purposes for you in life. It was so great spending time with you guys. God is so pleased when we come to him, when we seek to learn more about him, when we spend time with him. He loves that, he loves us, and he loves taking us higher. He loves helping us to grow and to learn. If you enjoyed the contents of this video, please subscribe to my channel. We do this every single week. I present a parable on a biblical topic or life principle. We talk about the meaning, the interpretation, and how it can apply to your life. And thank you as always for giving this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the video or if you have ideas for parables you'd like me to write in the future, leave those in the comments as well. Thanks so much for watching guys. Have an amazing week. God loves you just the way you are. God bless you. I'll see you next time.